of God's creation that makes us believe. So you love the dying. Magandang Aro, everybody. So here we are in Puerto Galera. It's a very exciting uh, day we have today. First of all, we are very lucky with the weather because it seems there is a super typhoon coming our way. I hope it takes time. What is exciting today, we are here in the Verde Island Passage. This place has been declared recently as the place of more marine biodiversity in the world. So that's not a little thing. I'm really excited and I feel the emotion of being able to dive in such a place, isn't it? So don't forget to catch all this excitement in today's episode. Where? How to dive. Magandang Arau, everybody. Here we are we in Berbarabe port. We have been riding since Morong for about uh, nine hours or so. And now we're going to catch this beautiful banker here. One hour ride, the sea is getting rough, so we're not going to take too long. And we go into Puerto Galera. Then the guys are going to be waiting for us. And then tomorrow we're gonna have a whole lot of fun because very clear, very near from here, we have the Verde Island Passage with magnificent dive sites. Let me tell you later where are to dive. to meet at 7.30 in the dive shop so that we can get all the gear set up and everything and uh, you know, discuss our plan for what we have you know, diving wise over the next couple of days. The plan is to dive uh, just locally tomorrow and we'll just keep doing the best local sites around here so we get you the very best footage you know, for, uh, for the TV show. Scandi Divers Resort, located on the gorgeous Big La Laguna Beach, provide us a dive briefing with their friendly dive masters. Well, guys, here we are, Magadang Arrow. Here we are in Scandi Divers with Larry and Leo. These guys know the place like the backyard. It's the backyard, actually, yeah. because these uh, two dive masters here 
they live here, right here, next door. So what can be, what can be better, isn't it? To have local guides that knows the place, knows the people around. So this morning we're going to do a nice coral reef, 60 feet to 70 feet, or like 18 to 22 meters. Ernest Point was very nice in a sense that we were very lucky to find um, hawksbill turtle. One particularity of, uh, of the, the species here is that they're not afraid of people, not unlike in other places of the Philippines that they run like hell. They swim like hell, man, when they see humans. This uh, hawksbill turtle was just eating, looking at us and then when she decided to take off she took off very peacefully we found another uh, hawksbill turtle with two remoras yellow remoras very very unusual and also th something that surprises me about this these uh, dives here is that uh, it's more frequently to see the green turtles than the Huxville, but it seems that in this area you have more Huxville turtles than, than green turtles. It's, it's interesting. They feed mainly on sponges by using their narrow pointed beaks to extract them from crevices on the reefs. Those sea turtles are a fundamental link in marine ecosystems and help maintain the health of coral reefs and sea grass beds. We also saw the world's smallest seahorse, the pygmy seahorse, with a size of about three quarters of an inch. We got a good video of an electric clam, 
with a highly reflected tissue that changed back and forth, creating a flashing effect. In Ernest Point, we saw a lot of trevallis, also known as kingfish. They weigh up to 18 kilograms. They can be distinguished by its golden colored spots, often patrolling the edge of reefs, rocks, or grass beds. You know, we have really, Ernie's Point is a really a great example of the biodiversity that we have on our reefs because it's a, for a start we have over 450 coral species here in, in Puerto Galera which is actually more than the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. So not only is it very colourful to look at, you know, the beautiful soft corals, there's also a lot of marine life that lives inside the corals as well, you know, so uh, also there's many crinoids, you know, that uh, also live live on the reef as well so that also gives it an extra dimension of color as well so you know with in terms of that you know in the hard corals you can find the Christmas tree worms that uh, live inside you know inside the hard corals and, and they pop out and they look like small Christmas trees you know and on one coral you might be able to see five or six different color Christmas tree worms all coming out at the same time so for that it's a really nice to make a picture of all those different color Christmas tree worms and then of course if you just do this close to them they all disappear back inside their tubes you know so that's also one of the many reasons we we have to come and visit Puerto Galera as well. Our dive in the whole of the world was a little bit challenging because of the strong current. At 12 meters, you will find this little hole in the middle of a huge rock, just big enough for a diver to swim through. So hole in the wall, uh, tinatawag siya na drift din eh. Kasi ito yung shallow dive uh, and then drift. Pinakakahuli-hulihang sloping rip ng pamuhat sa Sabang Point until to West Escarceo. And then yung hole na mababa, uh, madaming isda. Unang-una, drummer fish, sweet lips, 
Tapos yung mga tribale. Kasi kung pag sinabing drift, hole in the wall, pag mahina yung agos, maliit na isda makikita. Pag malakas yung agos, malaking isda makikita. Hole in the wall. That's uh, particularly unusual. It's not easy to find. So, guys, if you come around here, I highly suggest that you you hire the service of a local guide, dive master or instructor, because we could never have found the, the hole in the wall without a, a guide there. It's very interesting because that place has a strong current. If you pass by, actually most of the dives here are drift dives. You just jump into the water, you just flow with the current, and uh, uh, the captain of the bunker is going to follow the bubbles. Um, they'll, be, they'll be waiting actually for you in the right spot. So if you want to see the, the hole in the wall, then if you just carry, get carried away by the current and you pass it, it's going to be very difficult for you guys to, to go against the current. So actually you have to go with the flow. It's a, it's a small hole, it's about this diameter, one meter and a half, something like that. You have to maneuver in there. If you're not very sure with your buoyancy, please try to go on the side, whatever. Uh, uh, because otherwise you're going to start breaking pieces of corals and, and rock. You can damage your gear or you can hurt yourself. Hole in the wall is really uh, an adrenaline dive because we have uh, quite strong current there. So we call it the gateway to canyons. So basically you can go through the hole in the wall, you know, swim through. And then if you just keep going deeper, then you get down to the beautiful canyons dive site. So again, we saw another Hawksbill turtle there, but you can really see the bigger schools of fish there. Like we had some of the giant trevallies you know, which are the biggest of the Trevally family. So to see 20 of those, you know, on one dive is pretty special. Yeah, so again, uh, we also see a lot of sweet lips there as well. You know, so the sweet lips usually live around the, the hole in the wall there. So it's really a good place to see the, the bigger fish in Puerto Galera due to the location of it basically being close to the end of the island. So the current is stronger there, thus bringing more food into the area. Ang makikita doon sa Holland the Wall is uh, drummer fish, sweet lips, school of jackfish. Pero pagka may agos yun, pero pag wala namang agos, medyo mahina makikita doon. Butas lang. Pagka medyo malakas ang agos, inaabord namin ng dive. Hindi na kami sumusuot, lumalampas na lang kami para safety. Actually been voted in the top 50 dives in the whole world in a couple of magazines uh, a couple of years ago now, but uh, it, it is a very famous place, um, really because the current is so strong. It's also good to see the big schools of fish, but it's really amazing for the soft corals, because as you go deeper, you see the, the, the reef is basically covered by very soft and delicate uh, orange, uh, pink and purple soft corals, which really cover the reef. And you know, when you, when you shine your lights on those corals, you know, at depth. It looked like it's like a rainbow reef, you know, it's really beautiful color down there. And again, because 
there's a lot of food there, you also get the bigger stuff coming through there as well. So uh, sometimes you can see eagle rays down there, barracudas, uh, schools of jacks. You know, a lot of fish are basically hanging around that area because it's a good place to, uh, to eat, basically. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our first episode here in Puerto Galera, uh, La Laguna Beach, and especially Scan Divers Resort. These guys are amazing, very professional. It's not going to be the last, it's the first episode, but I can swear it's. Okay, guys, at last we are in Verde Island. This place is called Punta Verde. As I said before, Verde Island is in the Verde Island Passage. That is the place reputed to have more marine biodiversity in the world. We have the, the drop-off uh, dive that is gonna be the first one. Um, it's, a, it's gonna be an amazing dive because it's a pinnacle that goes from the surface to 100 meters. Obviously, we're not gonna reach 100 meters today because we, we are more into the videos and the diversity of life than to set a world record or something like that. Don't miss our Verde Island episode and see you guys at the dive. Okay, so here we are children. Um, a guide on the water is gonna be the one and only Mr. Larry! Good morning guys. So uh, the plan today is Verde Island, okay? Known as the center of the center of marine biodiversity of the world. Since 2017 until now we have the record. So basically 60% um, of corals, canyons, and 40% uh, of fish are there in Verde Island. Different types of species. So the area 300 meters to 400 meters away from the shoreline. So we're expecting current, like a wall dive. It stands about more than 100 meters. We will do maximum depth about 20 to 26 meters. And maximum dive time will be 50 to 60 minutes. Be careful every intersection. Sometimes you can feel down current, up current. So I want you to do, stay close to the wall, Okay, stay behind your dive guide. Always look up your computer, all right? And check your head. So I will be in the front, be at the back. Is everybody in? Let the show begin. Woo! is located in the epicenter of the world's richest marine biodiversity called Coral Triangle. It is also considered as the Amazon of the sea. It has the highest concentration of marine species around the world, a global priority for conservation. 
Well, basically, ang biodiversity or biological diversity, it's a coin term from biological diversity. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay samot saring buhay. So when you say marine biodiversity, ito yung samot saring buhay underwater, coastal environment or marine environment. Ken Carpenter, a renowned marine biologist together with Victor Springer, coined the term center of the center of the world's richest marine biodiversity. Coined the term the center of the center because we found essentially a, an epicenter of marine biodiversity in the center of biodiversity, which is the Coral Triangle. Ken Carpenter first started marine research in the Philippines as a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer in 1975, just after completing his bachelor's degree. According to him, there are innumerable reasons why species accumulated in the Philippines. As a matter of fact, a maximum number of creatures in Verde Island Passage below Luzon reaches up to 1.14 million hectares stretch of water. Philippines is at the crossroads of marine biodiversity where the Indian and Pacific Oceans meet, which resulted to higher concentration of species. Unique yung characteristic ng lugar. Nagkataon, siguro ito yung tinatawag na perfect na, na lugar na nagkaroon ng convergence na itong dalawang dagat na ito. Kaya um, maaaring ito ay isa talaga sa factor na napakaganda ng ecosystem sa ilalim ng BIP. Its geographical location just above the equator with a tropical climate and warm waters contribute why our country has it all. Um, there was a study conducted in 2015 that there are over 100 species found in the IP, one of which is the Moody branch, um, different kinds of coral reefs. So, yeah, um, kaya nga ang BIP ay consider the center of marine biodiversity because it has the highest and richest concentration of marine life. My partner Luis Heredia and our UNTV dive team reached the Verde Island Passage via a customized banca in a one-hour ride. Sajang pinerpiner namin yan sa UNTV para naman comfortable sila pumunta dito at sa mga nagiging guests namin para comfortable laging pinuwan namin malalaking banka para maluwag kumilos balanse sa tubig kasi kung yung speedboat lang gagamitin natin so isang grupo lang ang may sakay. Pag bangka, pwede dalawang grupo. So, bangka is the best. You also have to be careful of the strong current which could possibly tow you towards the wrong direction. Yung very experienced diver kasi dito yung dive site is maagos. So kana kailangan talaga magaling, magaling na diver. Pwede naman siguro mga bagong diver or open water, pero kana kailangan talaga nilang attention ng dive guide. It's definitely a tranquil island with an economic powerhouse beneath 
where a paradise of bounty marine species lies. Even though dive masters from Scandidivers dove in the area for so many times, they are still owed by the wide array of colorful corals and marine life. At dito sa Bird Island, makikita mo yung malaking isda, uh, iba-ibang klaseng species ng isda. Tapos nakikita mo rin yung maliliit, madaming klase ng nudie branch. Para sa akin, ito na yung pinakamaganda at pinaka uh, magandang dive site sa buong mundo. Surprisingly, other studies also testify that more than half of the country's fish species, as well as the majority of hard coral species worldwide, are found here. Uh, this concentration of coastline allows for many, many different habitats. Uh, not only do you have coral, seagrass, and mangrove habitats, but because of this different configurations of coastline, you can have different types of coral reef habitats, different types of seagrass habitats, and different types of mangrove habitats, as well as mud bottom habitats. Um, so these different habitats allow for many different species to um, inhabit uh, the, the central part of the Philippines. Oh, you know, the, there was basically uh, Ken Carpenter was the guy who coined the, the phrase, you know, the center of the center of the marine biodiversity in the world. I was actually lucky enough to dive with those guys here a few years ago uh, when they did a seven week uh, expedition here in Puerto Galera. And during that time, they actually discovered over 100 new species, you know, in just that short space of time. So it really is in the center of the center of the, the marine biodiversity. You know, with over 2,000 species of reef fish, over 1,000 species of nudibranchs, 450 species of corals. You know, we, we have everything that we would ever need to have here in the Verde Island Passage. The best known site in Verde Island is the wall. A sheer drop off over 70 meters into the depths. It is easy to find. In fact, you just need to look for the two rocks extending out of the sea on the island southeast point. Magnificent dive. Uh, it's called a drop off. Um, it's amazing because it goes from the surface to 100 meters, if you like. <laughs> Obviously, we went, we didn't go down there to 100 meters because sometimes it's not worth it to sacrifice the time and uh, the future bottom time of the, of the next dives in the sake of just breaking a record or something. Early Island Passage has been declared the place of more biodiversity, marine biodiversity in the world. And that's not a small thing. As soon as you go down, you don't know where to look. There are so many things. I'm not talking only about fish. I'm, I'm talking about uh, invertebrates, sponges, corals, ascidians, you name it, all the, all the, classic, all the taxonomy uh, in marine creatures is there. Maybe in a, in a square meter, you're gonna be able to number hundreds of species. You know, the, the drop off of Verde Island is, without a doubt, the most famous dive here, you know, in the Puerto Galera area, so, it's very famous, it's a, a pinnacle dive which is about half a mile from Verde Island itself and it's very famous for strong currents which bring in absolutely an abundance of uh, schooling reef fish. There's so much life in the range of 30 meters to the surface that it's really amazing. The number of things we've seen today, well, it will take hours to talk about it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me that some of the species we see sometimes, they're not even registered in, the, in, the, in science uh, with genus and species. They discover every time the, the specialists in corals 
and invertebrates come around here, they discover some new species. Basically, we did the we did the inside of the the pinnacle for the second dive, and again we had another hawksbill turtle. You know, we, we're basically talking about them every dive because we've been lucky enough to see them every dive. But for me, I really enjoy the the shallows of Verde Island. For me, is the best place because you know it's it's like it's raining anthias. You know, the very small orange fish. There's millions and millions on that uh, on that dive site. So. For me, sometimes the, the, they're so thick, they make like an orange wall that protects the reef, you know, from, uh, you know, from being viewed. Uh, I saw one Goliath triggerfish that is the same type that attacked me last time. And I was very happy that another Goliath triggerfish came and they uh, get untangled in this fight. Uh, I'm talking about the, these guys are rough, I tell you. They chase each other. They, they have a, like four big frontal teeth there. And, uh, and they try to bite, huh? It's amazing. I didn't know they were so aggressive. Maybe in there they are competing for territory. Maybe they are competing for females. That is the classical issue. Because there's so much fish there, you know, the food supply is basically endless. So they just hang around there all day, just chasing the other fish around the place, you know. And uh, yeah, it's it's really fascinating dive to spend an hour, you know, underwater on that uh, on the pinnacle there. It's very very good. Nudibranchs mating, that was, uh, I think that Miko has this on, on film there, for the ones who doesn't believe it. And uh, a large uh, red scorpion fish, that it was really a beauty also. Something really out of this world. I also saw this combination of space in a, in a reef. It's, it's something very valuable. So it's a lot of competition among uh, corals, different species of corals, sponges for space. After the two dives, Scandi Diver Stuffs prepared Santos Grill Park and some all-time favorite Filipino dishes for you and TV dive team here at Verde Island before we return to the resort. Normally, pagka kami nagda-dive dito, two dives, tapos lunch na, tapos bumabalik na kami sa, sa resort. May barbecue, lahat na nandito, may drinks, kompleto naman. Para na 
ano, para hindi naman magutom ng divers. Verde Island is truly an ideal destination for underwater photographers and videographers who are not only looking for macro and mock diving, but also a splendid wide-angle sceneries with healthy and colorful reefs. We it's really imperative that we look after that place with all of our heart, you know, because it really is, for me, probably one of the best dives in Asia. Uh, you know, I would really think, I think of it that highly as a, as a dive location in the Philippines. Very, very good. Yeah, well, yeah, just come and stay at Scandi Divers, you know, and uh, we arrange uh, a day trip over there almost weekly. So, you know, it's very nice. The, the currents can be quite strong there, especially doing full moon and new moon so that is for me when the action is is really at its peak because you know the all of the the tide will bring in a lot of food for the fish to feed on and it basically creates a, a huge ecosystem there that is uh, like a fish frenzy pretty much over there I would best describe it rain and fish rain. If we were fascinated with our wonderful dive at Ernest Point, where we saw the Hawksbill sea turtle, which was so friendly, and the adrenaline drift dive, which we did at the hole in the wall, this was made possible by a host dive resort here at Scandi Divers, who took good care of our UNTV dive team from room, food and also some sort of entertainment. The fire dance was a welcoming salvo prepared by Mr. David Asmussen, the owner of Scandi Divers. Usually for any groups, any groups of more than 10 people, we often do that for their last night that they're here. Often people are coming and taking dive courses in a group, and so that's sort of the final party uh, to, to have a fire dancer at the end and give certificates and, uh, and not dive the next day. Mr. David is a retired doctor and gynecologist. At first, he just wanted a place where he could relax and unwind. And I started with nine rooms and no boats. And then, uh, then this building became available. It was a resort without a dive center, without a swimming pool. And so then we got boats and got bigger, up to 27 rooms. And uh, so you can handle much better sized groups from anywhere when you have that many rooms. Far from the noise and the smog of the city, his Scandi Divers Resort is at the beachfront of Big La Laguna in a secluded place in Puerto Galera. Please feel free to contact us, Scandi Divers, at scandidivers.com, or and you can check out our website and on our Facebook, and you can contact UNTV if you want to find out some more. Also, they may be able to help you, but we are happy to help in any way with just questions. You know, first 
First, making the decision starts with questions, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Puerto Galera, known to be a port of the galleons, used by Spaniards as an excellent port or berthing place to take refuge. On December 26, 1973, by presidential decree 354, issued by then President Ferdinand E. Marcos, making Puerto Galera a reservation area under the Man and Biosphere program of the UNESCO. Saban Rec is located at the east of Saban Point with a depth of 22 meters. This site has some reef and wreck in action and can be either good for wide angle or macro photography. The, the Saban Rec is, uh, is nice because it's uh, still a sailboat, very nice in shape by the way. Steel sailboats are not so common as the wooden ones, as in the fiberglass ones. They're in Sabang Bay, they're a lot shallower. Yeah, so they're in around uh, 18 meters of water, and they're a lot smaller. Nearby is the strip out hall of an old sailboat named Awensha and this is where you still probably be greeted by the ever-present batfish. Special siya kasi madami kang makikita ang isda. Unang-una yung batfish. Well, batfish usually they gather around the shipwrecks here in, the, in Asia, especially in the Philippines. They are very friendly, big, Usually you get to see at least two or three different species of batfish. Uh, it's very common to see the antias also, that is this red little fish that sometimes we can find it in the numbers of 10,000 or more. Uh, they're all over the place, they're like clouds. Uh, even though they're small, they're still full of marine life, you know. Uh... I really enjoy diving the Sabang wrecks at night time because you can find uh, a lot of really good stuff like the big stonefish. You know, these guys basically look exactly the same as a stone, so you can find them on the wrecks. Um, there's also some pretty cool crabs and lobsters that live on the wrecks as well. This ship rests on his port side and it's not really worth penetration unless you see some macro critters inside. 15 meters long but you can actually go inside the wreck and it's full of uh, small fish so you get the video camera then swim through the, the schools of fish and they all kind of depart in front of you so you know they are a lot smaller but still very impressive to, to dive on as well.
West Escarceo is located in the western tip of Saban. It goes down from 8 to 21 meters with really good visibility. Though the waters in this site are characterized by strong currents, Sa uh, wreck to West Escarcio naman, eh, dyan makikita ang Islook, nice coral reef, buhay ng buhay dyan, kulol-pool, magaganda. Bago ang pailalim niya, sandi area na maraming makikita dyan, malalaking isda. Yung wreck point, uh, hindi mo makikita yung wreck sa ilalim. Yung wreck talaga ando sa shallow, doon sa shoreline. Uh, maliliit na bagay na makikita mo, especially yung nodi branch. Iba-ibang klase ng species. Mayroong Chromodores, Nimbrota, Pililidia, um, Pylodesmium. It is very popular to underwater photographers because of the ability to gently drift through the water for some very high quality still photos and videos. Resting peacefully under the waters of Puerto Galera, the Alma Jane wreck is a 60 ton of metal fixture that has become habitat to a number of marine plants and animals. Uh, our most famous wreck is the, the Alma Jane, which was a cargo ship that was sunk purposely uh, around 12 years ago now. I used to carry the, the beer over from Batangas to Puerto Galera, so it was very busy boat because they drink a lot of beer here in, in Puerto Galera. So it, it was sunk just uh, in 30 meters of water, uh, just over there in Sabang Bay. So over the years, the ship has basically been covered by beautiful soft coral growth. Um, you can see beautiful schools of batfish on there. There's usually a couple of large eels that live inside the cargo hold. got too old for the job so they decided to to dump her and it was a good very good idea of the divers and the people from the place to sunk it really near here in 30 meters of water it's upright 
perfect location, even with a little anchor on the, on the left-hand side. This 32 meter long Japanese ship sits 30 meters beneath the waters and gets enormous amount of lighting by day. So it's perfect for underwater photography. Tong Alma Jane, bali yan ay dati nakadry dock na siya dun sa Dalaruan. Kaso, Ah, naisip ng mga PGBDA dito na bilihin kasi hindi na siya pumasok sa marina. Luma na siya. Binili siya para uh, palubugin lang para gamitin sa advanced open water sa skills. 30 meter yun eh. He was cuddled or sunk on purpose to become a permanent fixture in the area and made to an artificial reef to protect fish and other marine life forms. This ship can easily be explored because it has been cleaned up before sinking. Other than becoming a place of refuge for marine animals, this has also become a great tourist destination for divers. Snappers and batfish like the outside of the wreck and school of yellow-tailed snappers usually are in the boat area. Very safe to dive because it's been stripped from the engine and all the, the complicated cables and parts so you can easily go down you're always gonna be in places where you can see your exit right away so it's very difficult that that you get trapped in there uh, you don't need special skills like wreck diving for example to do that dive uh, anyway i recommend that you do it with a local dive master i don't have any percentage with a dive master it's just a matter that you're gonna enjoy much more the dive if you do it this way as candy divers, especially Mr. Dave, Chris and Gary that made this uh, expedition possible and all the staff as candy divers. Sorry if I don't remember all the names, but these guys are very, very professional. So see you guys. Where? At the dive. It's the wonder of God's creation that makes us believe. See you at the dive.